happening. I think uh, this meeting is being recorded. Very good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to this webinar, Parenting Challenges Ahead. We are extremely pleased to have the presence of a panel of distinguished speakers with us today. They will be enlightening us with insights on parenting in the new normal. With this, let me invite our principal ma'am, Ms. Madhumita Sengupta, to deliver the welcome address. Ma'am, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, we are extremely honored that you have joined us today on this very relevant uh, topic that is being discussed in the morning. Uh, since our parents are also there in the audience, uh, first of all, let me begin by complimenting and congratulating all of you for being such great parents and proving that you are the reasons why your children are this wonderful. Parenting is the most challenging task in this world. Because see for every other profession or uh, academic pursuit that we do, there are certain guidelines which can be followed. Well researched, we adopt from different, uh, you know, different areas, different places. But parenting is such a challenge, which we learn for ourselves through our experience. And that challenge begins not only post the birth of the child. We have, we know very well about the prenatal cognitive developments. We know the story of Abhimanyu, who learned how to enter the chakravyu inside the womb of the mother. So parenting begins right there and it continues. And this is the challenge which we face as parents, which are unparalleled. We here at BDM International are forever ready to hold hands. And maybe we are not the parents, but definitely we are the second parents to your child. We are here to help you out and also to enlighten ourselves through the various challenges of parenting and be definitely very good parents to your children. So with that, I again welcome all our distinguished guests in this morning discussion. And I'm very, very hopeful and quite certain that this is going to add on a lot of values in our own learning and parenting schedule. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you, Principal Ma'am. I'm delighted to introduce our guest of honor, renowned percussionist, Mr. Bikram Ghosh. Mr. Ghosh, is an Indian classical tabla player. He is revered globally for his dexterity on the tabla and also for being one of the pioneers of experimental fusion music. Mr. Ghosh is unable to join us live in the session. However, he has shared his thoughts through this video. I would now request Vikram sir to kindly play the video. Sir. Hi, I'm Vikram Ghosh and I'm glad to be on this show organized by BDM International School. Parenting, uh, I'm not sure there is really a manual for it. I can speak for myself and to some extent for my wife, Jaya. We have two boys. They are a fair bit apart. They are eight years apart. One is almost 17 now, the other is eight years old. And of course, there have been challenges along the way. Several challenges. Uh, one is both parents being busy is uh, difficult uh, because you have to find time nevertheless and I think in that area my wife Jaya has actually managed much more than I have but uh, I have done my bit in in trying to trying to find those moments with them and uh, with the older child I can speak for myself I wasn't uh, a, I wasn't aware of what it takes because 
you never had a child before. But with the second one, having had the first one, and uh, that becomes a reference point. So you probably perform a bit better, uh, at least in my case, yes. Uh, where our lives are concerned, uh, because we both, me and Jaya, are both in the limelight, it is difficult to kind of control uh, what comes at them. For example, I mean, uh, if it's uh, a negative uh, criticism somewhere and they read it, they can get upset. On the other hand, because it's uh, because we are their parents, people tend to bring lots of gifts and lots of goodies and chocolates and what have you. So it often, uh, in their headspace, it becomes uh, this is. Uh, uh, something you take for granted. Oh, people are going to come, they're going to bring gifts, and uh, that is was a challenge for us because wherever uh, you're going, there is a certain uh, you know respect that people give you or a certain amount of importance, which the kids when they haven't earned it and when they've gotten used to that importance becomes a difficult thing uh, to handle as they grow up because the world is not like that. The world is very need based and. Uh, People give importance to what they think is, is 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 they should be doing in that moment, and you being somebody's son or daughter doesn't necessarily uh, make your life pan out uh, successfully. So uh, I always take my father's example. He was a great celebrated tabla player, but he brought me up in a way uh, where I was. Uh, he he brought me up in a very uh, middle class uh, manner where he would see to it that I earned everything you know if it was a gift I would need to play tabla well if it was uh, um, you know uh, something I, I desired then I would have to do a good result in school I'm not saying that that's the answer to everything but I do think that uh, uh, I've seen a lot of children go oh, kind of haywire when they only receive and there is a sense of entitlement there, which is something to be aware of because kids with a sense of entitlement almost always go, go ahead and falter in life because they can uh, face situations then which, uh, in, 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 you know, under the, the, the umbrella of uh, their parents, uh, they would uh, be, that would be taken care of. But when that's not there, then they would have to really struggle with the thought that why did it not come to them that easily when it happened before? So it's very very complex. I mean the whole the whole parenting uh, and going through the pandemic has been a huge challenge for everybody. So we've had two kids at home studying from home. The older one, I mean he he, he was doing his ICAC when uh, the pandemic uh, hit, and so he didn't give the exam. But he was stuck in boarding school, and then we brought him back home. He was stuck at home. The little one uh, almost doesn't remember school because two years, you know. So he's he's uh, he's like, oh yeah, I remember I used to go to school. So these are all challenges: online, offline, phone, tablets, uh, social media. This is a new world, and we uh, we were we didn't grow up in that world. We have to adjust uh, and uh, wrap our minds around all of this as parents that how much is good and how much is not good. So you can't like stop it because uh, that would be extreme. But then how do you control it is, is, is a challenge. So I would say uh, the key is balance. We try to keep a balance. We try to go uh, with the, the, the traditional way of finding time for each other, which always helps in my opinion. Uh, we always try to have lunch or dinner together when everybody is in the house. So no, no separate meals in the room. Uh, we try and go on holidays together. We uh, try to help each other out and the kids do that with us as well. So it's not like that it's, it's always happening. So you have to kind of enforce that, that uh, this needs to happen. With me, it's also a further challenge because I, I do want my children to, uh, whether they're professional or not, I do want them to be in music. 
so music is something you you can't really excel in unless you practice so my kids have to practice and uh, that is a challenge to get them to practice because uh, they often ask my friends don't need to practice why do i need to practice so these are all challenges we try to do our best and uh, yes the, the crux of the matter is you have to make them feel loved uh, you have to make them feel cared for and uh, you have to at the same time set an example for them you because you do end up being their role models and at the same time it's almost like elasticity so you give and then if you feel you've given too much hold back a bit so that they do have a certain malleability of their emotional states so that they are able to handle a no or even a yes at times you know so that's it i guess uh, i am like any other parent trying to uh, nail the stupies act i do hope everybody does well and i hope we all are able to create children to uh, in uh, definitely enhance uh, the humanity in the world let's hope they all become good kids and, and the world becomes a better place thank you so much namaskar We now have the pleasure of welcoming Mrs. Garima Chaturvedi. May I request Devoshini, ma'am, to introduce Mrs. Chaturvedi. Over to you, ma'am. A very good morning to one and all present. Today, as we have gathered here, we shall welcome Garima Chaturvedi, ma'am, who has been associated with BDN International as a teacher for five years and as a guardian for ten years. she teaches mathematics science and computer as an individual she enjoys listening to music cooking and reading with the change in the working and social scenario fulfilling her professional responsibilities and parental role was quite a challenge for her it involved a great deal of multitasking but as a teacher she says that she has learned new technical aspects to communicate with her students things have changed a lot in these two years and according to her nothing would have been possible without the teamwork cooperation and the infrastructure of bdn international now i would request garima chaturvedi ma'am to kindly share her views with us over to you ma'am Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible properly, to everyone. Yeah. Actually, uh, as a parent, I must say that uh, BDMI helps a lot in all the aspects. Not only in academic, I would say in their social and emotional well-being also. Why? Because uh, I'm having two kids. I mean, both of them. One uh, when this uh, pandemic came, one was the younger was in six. and uh, elder one was in eight so these two years they were just stuck at home and both of them were just reaching the adolescent period fighting a lot at home their emotional and the younger one is little bit restless i mean what is happening why we are at home why it is uh, uh, in the mean time her father was uh, affected by covid two times so that was also an emotional problem that why it is happening why you is there at in one room why you are doing all these things so i was i mean i faced a lot of challenges regarding this but i must thank the session which were uh, throughout this pandemic period in bdmi especially from the special educator points and the uh, counselors they this helped a lot not only in engaging them the activities which uh, were organized by the school it engaged them a lot in um, i mean in their free time they were all engaged in their work at the same time the sessions the uh, counseling sessions by every week by our special educator in the school it helps them to overcome their problems the physic uh, the emotional problems i would say whether physically so they are stuck i mean from parents side i also help them 
regarding maintaining the routine part every day your routine should be proper as like you are going physically to school waking up early doing your classes doing exercises so that helps that helps me a lot and i would really thank the school for giving so much of professional support plus the emotional support and uh, to my student to my students as well as my child also and as a uh, some instance i would say as a teacher where one of my few of my guardians used to call me up and say that uh, ma'am see the behavior pattern is totally changing at home they are just misbehaving with the parents what to do so i thought of like a parent only even though i was a teacher i thought of that what i would have done so i just uh, asked them to have consult with our counselor so they contacted the counselor and it was really very good that every time the school they were easily available to us we used we used to call them up and immediately the counselor used to help so that i think helped a lot throughout these two years and i am hoping for the best the schools are going to reopen and i would uh, love to see all of us actually including the students the school when we can't go to school without the students we feel just very bad so we are hoping for the best as a parent as a teacher thank you everyone thank you ma'am thank you garima ma'am may i please request our principal vice principal ma'am ms madhumita sir to introduce our guest speaker dr anandita chatterjee over to you ma'am thank you shreya ma'am a uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, thank you all the speakers and dr chatterjee for joining us today here with us now very briefly let me just uh, introduce ma'am ma'am has been a mentor and a guide for many children dr chatterjee is a clinical psychologist working in kolkata for the last 25 years she is attached with peerless hospital and bk roy research center as a head of child guidance clinic she was a post doctoral scholar at the rohantan university london and fontes university netherlands she is from the applied psychology department and has studied autism as a part of her phd at calcutta university she has a vast experience in teaching and research in the field of learning disabilities she has undergone a professional training on pecs that is picture exchange communication system to overcome communication difficulties she has uh, trained uh, she's trained in cbt and mindfulness an experienced clinical psychologist who counsels children as well as the adults thank you ma'am for being here with us today and over to you dr chatterjee very good morning to all uh, am i audible i guess yes you are yeah uh, and thank you bdm uh, i family for inviting me to this parenting session uh, today uh, i'll be sharing some of the uh, cases you know which i faced during the lockdown what happened that in 2020 March twenty fifth of March. I suppose I'm I'm giving you the right uh, day. The world stopped. Everything was shut down, and uh, it was a terrible feeling. Initially, it was a good feeling that all of us are at home, but then eventually things change, and we found that uh, things are not really what we. perceived or what we contemplate so all changes and started uh, after some time started the home schooling that is online classes parents uh, they uh, started working from home many parents which i have come across uh, in my uh, practice they lost their jobs lot of things and moreover on television all the time there was topic on covid 
then children as well as we as a parent or professional we also lost many near and dear ones and that created a big vacuum in everybody's life not only children but parents even the grandparents even i saw the older ones also who are absolutely panicked panicked and they are not able to cope up then <clears throat> this online classes what a great solace in children's mind they were happy to see their teachers they were happy to see some of their friends around but again there is a one way communication they couldn't interact like they used to interact in the classroom situation so this was somehow with prolonged sessions which i found was not very uh, uh favorable things for the children they they kind of uh, ignored they wanted to go back to school but things were not in our hands so uh, they were again back on online classes now in this online classes parents they they as a parent we always have expectations so parents expected that their children will study online they are getting homeworks from the school uh, classes are being done regularly then examination is also happening but there was some lacking in this what happened that many children they stuck to internet addictions so with this parent face real difficulties i'm sure there is some of the parents i'm not saying for all children but some of the parents will agree with me that the amount of screen time each child has now is tremendous and you just cannot uh, take them away the mobile from them because now that is their sole friend there are children who have withdrawn from the uh, social life they don't want to speak on the phone they just do whatsapp or they just do uh, snapchat they just do insta and things like facebook and all so uh, this is again a big issue to be addressed both from the parent side as well as from the school side since uh, there will be many children who will be going to school for the first time they haven't seen the school as yet what school means because all these years what happened that when a child grows at 2 to 2 and a half years we put the child in a, a play school and they get an idea of what the school is all about but now since they have crossed the age and they couldn't go to play school they will be put directly in a big school because age is a constraint in, a, in admission for a big school uh, so maybe they are coming to nursery or kg in one go without any experience of play school so that is where a big challenge lies because a child doesn't have the experience of school and uh, all these two years they were always clinging to their parents and they were at home and as we all know that home is the most safest and most comfort zone of anybody's life be it a child be it a adult or anyone so there is a big separation anxiety taking place nowadays children are not ready to go to school they are preferring to stay at school so here uh, i would request the parents who are here with small kids to visit the school uh, to make the uh, to make them feel the environment not per se for the studies or all just interacting with the teachers or keeping them for some time and when you are leaving the child the you must promise that i'll be back within 2 hours or 1 hours whatever and you must come back it's not that you are stuck with your work uh, and you're late to pick up your child this will create lot of issues in the children's mind because they are coming out many children not only in the school but even 
they haven't been to their relatives house they haven't been to anywhere they were always at home so this is one area we must uh, look into those for those parents who have smaller kids then uh, another issue which cropped up in my practice i saw that a lot of children are having a uh, lot of psychological issues and they are visiting us for consultation because in the sense that all this time they had online exam and now they have to come and do exam offline so that's a big challenge for the children as well as for the parents because at home they were not uh, giving exam the way exam should have been given uh, so this is one area where children one one girl came from um, some school like forgot the name and she said that ma'am online exam ami ki kore debo offline exam ami ki kore debo then i said why what is the problem all these years she is in class 9 all these years you have been given only two years if you have been given then she said ma'am amar to petrol she ni nei so you know children they they confess at time they don't lie all the time uh, so so they they feel this kind of difficulty so here it is the work of the parents to help them out to reduce their expectations because parents they have lot of expectations from the uh, from their child it is obvious we also do have but then we have to balance that okay maybe your first exam will be little uh not that good but you must have you are a good student so encouraging your child is very very important at this juncture and <clears throat> uh there are children who are having a uh, lot of difficulties in terms of eating disorder uh, then uh, sleeping disorder all these needs to be addressed by uh, the parents they they should feel that whether the child is little bit off beat not participating in any activity sitting in uh, in a room quietly very withdrawn you must ensure that child mental health is in a correct form so either there are many teachers who are very friendly with the uh, children so either the uh, they should consult the teachers or the school counselor or the professional because these small things piles up and we kind of ignore and then it becomes big and the child busts up so we as a parent we have to take all these red flag signs that why my child is behaving little odd why my child is not interested in anything why my child is so sad why my child is not eating properly there are many children who lock themselves in a room and then parents get panic and but there there may be some other reason child may wants to remain little aloof and as we said that me time me time is very important for children as well as for the adults so ensure that they also get me time and for parents my suggestion will be that you understand your child you communication is the most important thing you know you uh, at times we school our children and we kind of humiliate them so make sure when you're speaking what you're speaking and how you're speaking which is very important because Uh, a child when uh, in distress child will always come to the mother or father or sibling so if he or she gets a support there it will be easier for him or her to deal the problem and teacher plays very important role i think all of us will agree that our point of time also we had one teacher or two teacher with whom we would share our problems we would talk 
of the things, the, not not per se studies, but we will uh, we have talked many things with the teacher. So teacher is one of it's not the mentor only, it's a friend, philosopher, and guide. And similarly, parents also has to understand that a child has difficult time in these two years. So all of a sudden, if the school reopens also, things will not change because. Even in school, when the children are going, we are getting complaint that they're very sluggish. They, are, uh, they want to lie down. They, they are putting their heads on the desk. Uh, they're very slow. They, they are not agile as they were. So here we have to understand that in two years, children have learned a set of things. And now it, the time has come to de-learn them. So anything de-learning takes time. It doesn't happen overnight or it doesn't happen all, all of a sudden. So it is very important that we give them time, we encourage them with small things, we inculcate them with good uh, discipline as they had a lot of children, they had uh, that their disciplining part has become very much affected because they were at home. So uh, it's not that they were sitting in table or chair or for uh, classroom. They were on the bed, some were, uh, some were on the sofa. So their whole discipline has been uh, shattered and now it needs to be rectified. So that uh, thing will take little time and very small, small thing, the eating habit then uh, little bit weaning of mobile phones from them. Uh, like when they are sitting in table, they should not, all of them, it, it is a very common meme now there, uh, now at times that we see uh, all, even the parents are also having mobile, children are also having mobile. Nobody is talking over the food. So as a parent, it is very important that we understand our child we, our expectations are towards a little bit in a realistic manner. Uh, and we should give the child to express themselves. It is very, very important. If the child gets any hint from the parent that the parent may not like this or parent will be uh, angry, the child will start lying. So give them that openness that please come up with anything you have in mind let us see we can sort it out we can figure it out how to deal with that so instead of saying no we must learn how to say no in a yes format so it is very very important that communication with children are very important and uh, parenting per se has now changed we will not be able to tell that in our days we did this, so why not you? We have to adapt with the present situation. We have to learn the new skills of parenting. I don't think so. Uh, our parents were so anxious with our report cards or with our uh, friends or whatever. Uh, but now parents are anxious about their child's performance, about their child's well-being. Uh, they want everything uh, tailor-made, everything fits into uh, a right place. So my uh, suggestion will be that you have to give some me time, you have to give choice, you have to uh, understand your child's emotions, child's feeling, uh, comparing with the other children, then it's a big no. Then there are parents who does a lot of corporal punishment. That has to be stopped from the day one because that is where a child develops aggression. The child develops a uh, feeling of uh, anger and all. So all these things needs to be uh, handled very carefully. And 
you have to take your child in confidence because sometimes we have seen that if we put too much of restrictions they just figure out their some way out even their friends also help so it is very important that we must uh, take these calls as important red flag signs to give them a perfect mental health thank you all thank you ma'am may i now request sukanya ma'am to introduce mr ram jivanat over to you ma'am good morning everybody uh, next up is mr ram gopal vallad we are uh, blessed to have mr ram gopal vallad with us uh, he is a successful writer of three best selling books and uh, his latest publication uh, active parenting has touched a million lives positively uh, being a motivational speaker and author and accredited coach and a tech co-founder he would share his views to, uh, today with us over to mr vallad thank you so much uh, thank you bdm international for the opportunity to speak to your parents uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, over the last 8 years what i have been doing in life is to help people become more successful in life whether it is professionals whether it's children whether it's parents i have addressed over lakh and 20000 people in the last 7 years and during the course of this 7 years i have been observing people i have been coaching people um, as a life coach i have been helping a lot of people with various difficulties that they face various challenges that they face in life and the one thing that i have realized is that <clears throat> many of the problems that adults face if their parenting that they went through was um, addressing some of these issues they wouldn't have been in that position they would have been far more successful far more happy far more responsible resilient so when about 5 years back i decided that i want to actually help in making children more successful in life the one path i could take was to help parents with parenting strategies which will help them bring up children to be more successful um, as a motivational speaker i basically get about 45 minutes one hour every time i deliver a talk i know that it sort of kindles a spark in children but obviously every child is different every situation is different every household is different and it's only the parents who are able to really influence the children's life over a period of time no motivational speaker no external factor can do that and that's when i realized the best thing that i can do and i have taken on this responsibility on myself of touching a million lives positively the best thing i can do to make that happen and to change the world for a better place is to really spend time in collating certain guidelines which parents can use to make their children more successful in life um so that that 5 years back the quest started of figuring out uh i did a lot of research as a as a life coach there was a lot of psychology that i already had to learn uh but how do you translate that to children so i actually um, enrolled for a diploma in child psychology i spent enormous amount of time interviewing parents and Uh, over the last 5 years i have collated this entire framework which i called active parenting which helps parents and the book active parenting was launched about 6 months back it's become a best seller ever since uh, active parenting is about helping parents bring up children to be happy responsible and successful as adults uh i have delivered over 25 webinars addressed about 5000 parents in the last 6 months 
And I've also sent a survey form in each of these webinars. And as some of the earlier speakers said, parents have been really, really beset with a lot of challenges, especially in the last two years. Number one, the world is changing so fast. The parents have no clue about what the world is today. It is so vastly different from the childhood that they were brought up in. And number two is um, the pandemic has put in a completely different perspective into, into the whole thing. Uh, the challenges, some of the challenges which have come up in all the surveys that we have done. Number one is skin and addiction by children, whether it is a three-year-old child or a 15-year-old child across the board, this is one big issue. Added to that is tantrums, which are actually in a, in a way also completely linked to the screen addi addiction. Lack of confidence, lack of concentration and ability to focus on academics. Again, I would say that's directly linked to screen addiction in some ways. Uh, so when I looked at these problems that parents were facing, Parents can address each of these issues in a reactive fashion by the usual this thing of you know, either shouting at the child, punishing the child, or cajoling the child, or uh, bribing the child sometimes, sometimes completely ignoring the issue. Uh, but the point is that some of these issues may not never crop up if parents spend time in proactive parenting instead of reactive parenting. If you can identify a few attributes and qualities that children should have and proactively address that from very early childhood, almost infancy actually, and going up to teenage years, consistently drive those attributes and qualities in children, then many of the issues that parents face on a day-to-day -day basis will never even crop up. And even if they crop up, it is much easier for parents to address it because they would be a trusted friend of the child rather than a boss or a judge. Uh, so active parenting has three basic principles in it. Number one is, uh, it's about proactive parenting, proactively building the right attributes in children and instead of reacting to situations. That is number one. Number two is that parents should recognize that every opportunity Every interaction with a child is an opportunity for building that right quality or attribute. And parents should be aware that every interaction sends a message to the child and that message needs to be consistent with the qualities that they want to build in the children. And the third thing is, if you want to have a stress-free parenting life, rather than you having to impose each and every um, uh, each, each, each and every ability in the child or each and every interaction with the child being a coaching interaction or a, a fixing interaction, it's far better to build the self-discipline and responsibility in the child from early age so that they take responsibility for their own lives. Uh, and uh, the, the five attributes that we have identified in active parenting, which will make a person successful in life are Social consciousness, which is a very important attribute because if you want to be a law-abiding citizen who contributes to the society at large, you need to have social consciousness. Second one is authenticity. Um, authenticity is very important because the more transparent you are with people, the more they are attracted to you, they like you, they are supportive of you. Happiness. Obviously, every parent that I inter interviewed said the first attribute they want in their children is happiness. So how do you proactively build happiness? Uh, resilience. Life is not a cakewalk. You will always go through difficulties. Uh, it is a given that uh, sometimes you go through very steep downturns, sometimes small downturns. But the ability to handle that and bounce back, that is resilience. And the last one is purpose-driven. Children need to have, uh, parents need to build a sense of purpose in children from early childhood so that they are able to manage their own lives. They are self-driven, they are self-energized to achieve their own goals. They set their own goals, they go after it, they achieve it. Uh, so that is how much I want to cover in this, I think only four minutes here, but I would be happy uh, that if all of you could, um, whenever you have an opportunity, read the book, Active Parenting, and then 
um, you can always reach out to me for any further support on that. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I now have the pleasure of inviting Alukananda Ma'am to introduce Ms. Shubhika Singh. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. A very good morning to one and all present over here. It's a great honor to introduce one of the distinguished speakers of this webinar. She is none other than Mrs. Shubhika Singh. Mrs. Shubhika Singh is a consultant psychologist. She is the co-founder of InnerCraft, a psychological well-being startup. She has been practicing for over a decade and consults at various educational institutions and corporate organizations. Mrs. Shubhika Singh is dedicated to creating a positive impact and aid in alleviating emotional and psychological distress. She is a trustee at Lifeline Foundation. Thank you, ma'am, and over to you. Um, thank you for the wonderful introduction and good morning, principal ma'am, vice principal ma'am, and everyone present here. And thank you for having me here today as um, this, on this wonderful panel discussion on parenting challenges. So uh, when uh, uh, Chandra called me for this talk, and uh, the first thing that came to my mind was this is such a wonderful initiative by BDM International School, primarily because there is no school for parenting. You know, when someone wants to become a doctor, what do they do? They go to medical school. If someone wants to learn driving, they go to driving school. And as uh, Madhumita Ma'am, my principal Ma'am mentioned earlier, parenting is the toughest job in the world, and yet there is no school for that. So today, in my humble capacity as a psychologist, I want to share some very simple, practical ways for parents to manage their children at home. Because I think the one thing that we all must acknowledge is that in 2022, when the pandemic hit, overnight, millions of parents across the world were not only parents anymore, but they became teachers, they became friends, they became their children's playmate, um, along with, of course, all the other responsibilities they already had on their shoulders. You know, whether they were working parents, working mothers, looking after the home, caregiving. So the responsibilities were immense, the pressures immense. But I'm not going to talk about that more. My idea today is to, you know, um, equip you with some techniques. So let's start with the basic. And that is every parent wants to provide the best for their child, right? in terms of love, opportunities, best education, support, as well as a holistic environment. And of course, given the pressure, it's a very, very complex process. Now, the most common method or the most common ideologies parents use to raise their children is from the time that their parents raise them. But you know, Time has changed so much. Our environment has changed so much that we really need to update the methods. When we were younger, as uh, you know, Alokaranda Mama was saying earlier, that parents weren't so anxious about children's results. They let you play for hours. So what is happening today? A parent who comes to pick up their child after school will not ask, did you eat lunch? They'll start picking up the copies to check classwork, homework, and maybe even look at what did they lose today? So what is the instant message going into the child's mind? It's about school is the only place for studies. The only thing that matters is how I studied and my marks. But let me tell you something today. School education not only provides academic knowledge, but also a huge set of experiences that help a child learn so many different skills, interacting with friends, with their peers, making friends, learning discipline, learning how to follow what a teacher is telling them, understanding what authority means, standing in a queue. You know, they learn to follow a system, discipline, um, and so many other uh, skills that 
no textbook or no other person can teach them. So the rest of the time, which is outside of school, the child spends with parents, friends, and family. But it's equally important in building a child's personality. So it's very, very important for all parents to be on the same page as the school. So my first request here to parents is be a partner to BDM International School. Because when you and the school are putting in the same values, the same ethos in the child, there's no confusion. You know, a simple example here would be, you know, this whole uh, fad of tuitions, you know. So the school is teaching chapter two, but the teacher in, in tuition is teaching chapter four. So automatically what happens to the child sitting in class? He or she is not interested because they've finished this already. So parents are in such a rush to be ahead of the race that in order of being in front and being up in front, you're actually taking the child away from what the teacher is teaching them in class. And just the way you are a role model for your child, the teacher is the most important role model for your child too. Because outside of you, they're spending maximum number of hours in school with the teacher. So let's take, for example, you know, all of us, we have a lot of greenery around, okay? So think about, I want everyone right now to think about a tree in your mind. Can you have, do you have a mental image of a tree in your mind? And now think about how did this tree grow? What was required for this tree to grow from a small seed and sapling into this tree over a number of years? Can we say that it was only the environment that helped the tree grow? Can we only give credit to the sunlight of the tree? Or can we give only credit to the water or the gardener? No. There's equal or there's equal importance to all these elements in nature. Likewise, for a child's mind and behavior, there's equal importance given to all stakeholders in a child's life for a holistic growth, right? To ensure that my child grows up to be somebody I'm proud of, who has all the values that I inculcated, who morals the uh, responsible citizen that I am and I wish for him or her to be. So number one is be a role model to your child. And I want you to look at it in a very simple manner. I won't get into psychological job. Just think about someone looking at you, reading you, observing you, and imitating you for 16 hours a day, because I'm putting eight hours away from sleep. Think about if there was a camera on you all the time. You know, when we all take our phones and take a photograph, what do we do? We smile, we set our hair to look the best. Your child's eyes is that same camera on you. They're learning by watching you. All of us have picked up so many behaviors from our parents unknowingly. It, it happens automatically because they're around. So if you feel your child is doing something which you're not liking very much, notice within yourself, is that happening to you? Screen time is a big challenge now. When you come home from work, are you sitting talking to each other or are you sitting on your phone checking and scrolling uh, whichever, whatever you like to do on your phone? Simple thing is washing hands before eating. We keep reminding children, go wash your hands, go wash your hands, go wash your hands with soap. Do you do that yourself? Do it yourself and you will see your child will automatically follow because you are the biggest role model and influence in your child's life. Also coming from the same method, if there's something that your child is doing or something you're doing, which you know will in turn harm them in some way, or it's not, the, it's not something you're proudest of, you know, like just getting angry at someone or throwing things when you're angry. So don't do anything in front of your child that you don't wish 
for them to adopt. What you sow is what you will reap. So if you're sowing apple seeds, can you expect a mango tree in 10 years? Never, never. And that comes to my next point, which is when people talk to children saying, oh, look at that boy, he dances so well. Look at that boy or look at that girl, her homework is so neat. Look at that boy who's always saying yes and doesn't talk and doesn't behave badly. Why can't you be like him? Why can't you be like her? What is that? I'm telling my child, you are not good enough as you are. I want you to be like someone else. What is the message the child gets? I need to be like other people. I'm not okay as I am. And this directly affects their self-esteem. And self-esteem and self-confidence, we know, are essential skills to take you through life. Today, when you're doing a job interview, Yes, your credentials matter, but what also matters is the way you present yourself and interact with the interviewer. And that really comes from confidence. So if your confidence is taken away from you at such a young age by telling you, be like someone else, what will happen when you grow up and you're older? So think of these messages, you know, no two people are the same, especially no two people from different homes and different parents. And ask yourself, are you and your sibling, most of us, I mean, a lot of you might have siblings or cousins you've grown up with in the same house. Are you and your brother or sister the same? You'll realize that your personalities are totally different. Your ways of interacting, your empathy, your emotional coaching, uh, your interests, everything is different, it's varied. Because no two people can be the same. So remember that your child cannot be like someone else's child or another child of yours. Appreciate them, love them for who they are and what they do. Of course, that doesn't mean that you don't encourage them to become better. But if you want to do that, find an older person for them to model. You know, someone who's at least five to six years older than them. It's not in their peer group. It's someone older they can look up to as an elder, Didi, Bhaiya, or Chachi, Masi, whoever it is, to emulate their behavior. But remember, comparison is the biggest parenting mistake. And that will also ruin relationships between your child and who you're comparing them to. It can never bind relationships. And especially between two siblings, you know, whether you're two sisters, a brother, or sister, or two brothers. We are all aware of family complications as we grow up. And often these seeds come back because what do we all tell our parents? You love my brother more, you love my sister more, you've given them more. Where does all this come from? These are small things we say as children, but as we grow up, this feeling keeps growing. You know, today, um, we, we see so many families split apart. They don't talk to each other because of the seeds that were set in in young age that one is better than the other one. Avoid doing that. There are many more ways of making your child do better. You know, as a psychologist in so many counseling sessions, I've heard, uh, you know, children say, if my mother likes my cousin more, why doesn't she just adopt him and I'll leave the house and go away? Imagine how heartbreaking it is for someone to think that their parents don't love them. But the fact is all parents love their children unconditionally, but they get caught up in this race of, I want my child to do better than everyone or as good as everyone else, right? Uh, my next point here would be another common, common, very often uh, complaints that parents share is, my child does not listen to me. And I can see many of you smiling and you know, that's obviously something you relate to because more and more parents are saying, my child doesn't listen to me, they ignore me, I don't know what to do. And sometimes, you know, 
I feel that all right, you know, uh, now how old is your child? Is it, is it a teenager? Because the teenagers have a mind of their own, and of course, they think they know everything, right? But parents are now saying this for children as young as four, five, and three. Now, if you just think about the age difference, a parent who is 30, 33 years old is saying, my three-year-old, my four-year-old does not listen to me. Is that really possible? It's not. It's about how we are communicating. So one of the best ways is to also notice how are you communicating and talking to your child? You'll notice many times we give them too many instructions together, three, four instructions all together. Or we go into explaining lecturing mode of why they should do this, why they should do that. But children's brains are so small and they're it's not fully developed. So their attention and focus span is much lesser than ours. Instead, give them instructions in short sentences and let it be one or two at a time. Give it a little break and let them repeat what they've heard or understood from you. And let it be in a non-tension environment, not that, hey, I've told you to do this. Why haven't you done this? When we get angry, when there's stress and tension, none of us function well. Even as adults, our mind shuts down and we get nervous. So naturally, young children, it also happens to them. Also notice your own self. You know, has there ever been times when you've been so busy or preoccupied? Life is busy for all of us. But has there ever been a time when you've been preoccupied, busy, and your child is talking to you? And you haven't heard what they're saying. You can hear the sound of their voice and words coming out. But are you paying attention to what they're saying? Many times it goes unnoticed. Many times children will also find study time to be the time to share all their stories with mommy or papa. And what happens to the parent at that time? They get irritated. And all you want to do is sit and chat. You do golf or into amake, you know, tell me one thing. E.G. Golpo, I don't miss the interaction for it. The same Golpo, which it can be such a special bond between you and your child. You know, remember, if this bond gets created at this age, it will stay forevermore. If you shut them down now, it will be very difficult to create this bond when they're teenagers and adults because they're not used to it. And they will often say, and they'll often recollect that, you know, but when I was doing it, it was never hard. I was never hard. When I used to come back and share stories and say things and ask questions with my curious little eyes, I was always told to sit down quietly. Sit down quietly. Remember one thing, parents. What happens in the classroom, you will always find out from the teacher, from a classmate, from another classmate's parent. What happens outside the classroom with your child? The only way for you to find out is from your child through these golf stories. So while they're talking to you, also indulge in what we call active listening. And that is very simple. That means you're making eye contact with them and you're showing them that you're interested in what they're saying. You're listening to them with attention. If you model active listening with your child, they will also model listening to you. Also, like I said, re-look at the instructions you're giving them. Um, are you speaking too fast? Are you giving them too many instructions together? Break it down, give one at a time. Maybe your child isn't able to take in four or five instructions all together. Bring it down to one or two and see how they respond before you take it up. All right. And my last point is, um, you know, school is not a machine that you send a child there and he or she comes out as his ready-made product of being this excellent student, excellent in co-curricular activities, ex excellent in running, excellent in public speaking, and as a teacher's pet and doing everything A+. School is not a place 
for perfection creation. So you need to support what is happening in school. Take interest in what your child is learning at PDM International School. What is going on there? Um, you know, what events are happening in school? Encourage them to participate. Keep in touch with the teachers. Remember, if you and the school partner together for your child's upbringing and holistic development, you will have the best little child who will grow up to be a responsible and morally ethical Indian citizen you want him to be. So I hope these tips have helped you today. And uh, I'm here for any question answers that you would like. Thank you so much, Ma. And thank you once again to all our speakers for sharing their insights. I would now uh, take the opportunity to welcome our headmistress, ma'am, Ms. Rakhi Lahiri, to summarize the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Shreya, ma'am. And I think we're already into the afternoon. A very good afternoon to all present. Um, it's very difficult to sum up a session like this, which I think can continue for a little longer period. Because parenting, as it is, as we know, is a challenge, will be a challenge, and, I, and there is no denying that. That's also because every child is unique. So we know that, that we cannot have a school for parenting when we know that our children are different. So the, each child is unique. So how can you even expect having a school? But at the same time as parents, we all need some directions because the challenges are profound. The challenges are extremely challenging to the extent that it is also taking a, uh, taking a toll on the mental health of parents along with children. So uh, there were a lot of things which have been addressed today in this uh, interesting webinar that we've had today. And a uh, few things I think we can just uh, highlight and make a note of. What is the, we had Mr. Vikram Ghosh who uh, shared his experience as a celebrity parent. And there he very nicely put it across saying that, I think a life of moderation should be emphasized in a child's upbringing and not a life of excesses. This is something we all, I think, agree with. Yes, we uh, as working parents have been a time when we've always indulged our children with you know, a whole lot of things, material things, which is probably not a very good idea. And today when we are on the other side of the chair and we know uh, we are in the school setup, when we are administrators, we are teachers, we know we have a big role to play in their upbringing. So uh, in such a situation, we realize that definitely a life of excesses are not desirable. And at the same time, we had Dr. Chatterjee very uh, candidly putting across the challenges that are faced by our children. So there is no denying the fact that our children are uh, the ones who are worst affected in today's time and age. And we see that the situation probably, we are hoping that the situation will improve. But, and we hope for the simple reason that schools are reopening, we, we hope to improve communication channels, we hope to reach out to our children. And as parents, I think the best thing would be now to look at school at the same, as, as being on the same page as them. As rightly put in by uh, Ms. Shubhika, yes, school and parents, schools and parents, if we work hand in hand, I think we will do a wonderful job. And this challenge somewhere down the line may get reduced. So, but it will still exist because I, it, it's a challenge, it's an everyday challenge. There's no running away from it and there's no denying it. And uh, we're extremely thankful to Mr. Vallad for sharing the five attributes uh, of parenting, of um, active parenting, this uh, bringing in resilience, improving communication channels with our children, I think are the moot points which we all need to make a note of. Yes, we need to improve our communication channels. We are very good role model for our children because children do have role models in life and they would love to follow their role models. So when we are at the dinner table, it would be just, just the right thing to do if we keep away our you know, mobile phones and talk to our children talk to them about anything and everything that happened in my day today and let, let them share what happened in their day 
for that particular time. So it has to be a, a how should I say, a two-way sharing. So that either a child understands that is someone who is listening to me, actively listening to me, and who's also with me. This is also very important because most of the time as parents, we are communication is instruction based, which again, after a point has no impact on children. Children only respond and I think they start learning to value the communication and their self uh, respect, self esteem grows only when they understand that they have a support in the parent that they have with them. So it, this is very, very important. And um, I'll repeat again saying that yes, parenting is a challenge and will be a challenge, but then we are learning every day. That's what life is all about. So uh, because this world without the we teachers, we schools, we exist only because of our children, isn't it? So parenting is a, a universal process and that just continues to stay. And it's just that we will deal with it as it comes. And we are extremely thankful to all our speakers for sharing their wonderful thoughts and, uh, and, and in fact, simplifying certain uh, areas so that it's easier for us to communicate with our children. So, but before I uh, we call for the vote of thanks, I would request our director, VDA Memorial, Mrs. Suman Su, to kindly share her thoughts. We are extremely happy that ma'am is here with us today in this webinar. Ma'am, if you could kindly share your thoughts on this interesting topic that we have today. Um, very good afternoon to all present here. Uh, my gratitude and uh, kudos to BDMI team for organizing such a wonderful session. It is so pertinent, this topic, and so important to know about uh, the various challenges that parents are facing or are going to face in the future. Well, as uh, most of the panelists has, have said, and also as Rakhi Ma'am just now said, that this uh, parenting has always been a challenge and will always remain a challenge. And there is no one size that fits all. So my only uh, take on this is that we need to be instinctive parents. We go, need to go back to our instincts and not to expose ourselves to um, unnecessary uh, cautions and to unnecessary um, guidelines and um, uh, whatever you see on the media. Because when we do that, we uh, expose ourselves too much to this. And what happens is that we um, lose our instinctive parenting, that, you know, that gut feeling. We've all been brought up, brought up with um, uh, that kind of gut feeling by our parents and by our grandparents. But yes, I do understand the fact that these days there are nuclear families, parents don't have those kind of guidelines, the type of guidelines I think we as parents got from our um, parents-in-law and from our parents. So uh, being in nuclear families, it is very difficult. You know, Sometimes you do have to depend a lot on media, but then um, you do look inwards and feel what is right for your child and what you can do to prevent a certain situation or what you can do to make your child uh, move on with the assurance and confidence in life. So um, first of all, as um, uh, Ms. Shubhika Singh also said, that uh, love and acceptance is so important. To love them as they are, this is what is needed. When you do that, believe me, half of the worry is gone half of your problems will disappear and you will find that children will grow in an environment which is so happy and conducive for their growth and assurance, assure them that you are there with them all the time. So the, the model that I feel that should be followed by parents is listen, comfort and assure. Listen to whatever they have to say, listen with your full involvement. Not this, no, I know we are so busy in our lives. We have so many commitments that it becomes difficult sometimes when you are busy in the kitchen and the child comes running to you, child wants to share something at that time. And what happens is that we are busy and we tell the child, wait. And that one word, wait, has killed that moment of bonding with your child. You 
are right in your way probably you know it's so important for you that you have to tell the child to wait but if it is not if you can switch off the gas whatever you are doing stop that and sit down and listen to your child and if you do that spend those two minutes those two minutes will go a long long way so that is my only guideline and that is my only thought on this whole process and uh, i'm i'm sure if you do this you will realize that these are the aha moments the aha moments of parenting and those moments which bind you to your children they these are moments of curiosity if a child comes up to you with a question and you don't have time to answer that question or listen to the question that moment of curiosity is gone and the child has moved on he's forgotten about it and you have killed that moment of learning and killed that aha moment which would have been a base for his lifelong learning and of course be a role model whatever you tell the child do it first and values life skills these are what we have to teach them and i'm um, so thankful and uh, feeling so elated and grateful to god that we are back again our walls are vibrant now our schools are filled with laughter of children we are once again we have the, this feeling of the um, squeals of laughter around us so i hope this remains and uh, parents please don't be anxious keep sending them back to school parents are to your children are in safe hands and they will all be safe so don't worry be happy enjoy the childhood of your and enjoy the parenthood so all the best to you thank you once again thank you ma'am with this we now open the forum for further discussions and question uh, question answer uh before we begin i would request the viewer to viewers to go on mute if you already if you're not already and do raise your hand using the raise hand facility uh within the reaction button of your screen there is a reaction button where you will find the raise hand option you can enable that when uh, you have a question all right so i already already see a hand raised um mohua gupta ma'am could you please unmute yourself yes yes good afternoon everybody my query to dr chatiji is how do i handle disobedience when i observe in my child well uh first of all uh, regarding what kind of obedience you're talking about uh some uh the same if, if, if i see any signs of your child whatever you say is not ready benign, to uh, or uh, sometimes sometimes uh, he is disobedient yes uh he is not taking my instructions so how do i handle it if i all of a sudden no, what, what i that's what i wanted to know what what kind of instruction are you uh, always giving him instruction as no. as to this conversation we came to know that uh, no. we always instruct but we never uh, go uh, in other way so uh, is it regarding academics is it regarding uh, stopping him for uh, doing something because what happens when things starts he don't say no but when things increases to that utmost level then when you put bar on that then the child disobeys the child doesn't want to follow because he has already have that habit of doing so my uh, suggestion would be that when you are saying no say in first go only not that when the child is already uh, habited with that habit for example screen time you are uh, giving screen time uh, most of the time and all of a sudden you take uh, the screen away from the child that's not right 
child will not obey because he has the habit of looking at it. So uh, talk to the child and uh, uh, look into the matters that whether the child is able to do rest of the things in proper time or not. If the child doesn't do, then you better uh, take the help of the teacher or to the school counselor or to, because sometimes you know, it is important that the child doesn't listen to the parents, but they listen to the other uh, command. So it is better that you take an intervention in this, if it is beyond your control, of course. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. Um, we next have uh, Pradipta Ma'am. Pradipta Ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, thank you. My question is to uh, Ms. Shubhika Singh. Uh, since I'm a working parent, it becomes very difficult for me to balance my office work and spend time with my child. So is there any way I can ease out the stress? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Roy, for that question. It's a very important question. Um, I think uh, to get the right balance between work and family life is, uh, is an age-old uh, struggle for most people. Um, but I think the most important thing to do is when you have time with your child, A, make it a priority every day to spend time with your child, which is quality. And by quality time, I mean is it could be even 20 minutes in a day but those 20 minutes are all about your child only. So there's no screams on that time. There's no uh, replying to WhatsApps or picking up calls. It should just be undivided attention on your child to have a conversation sometimes, you know, or sometimes it should be about just playing a game and doing something fun. Um, another way uh, to also include a little more time between your child and you is to maybe start a healthy activity together. And that could be like exercising together, going, uh, you know, just running around the house, playing catch and catch, or reading together. You know, it could be something different um, across the week so that, you know, you're also staying fit mentally and physically, and so does your child. So these can really become some fun things that a parent and child does, and both are growing and developing together. But undivided attention is very, very important in that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would next uh, request um, Bondona, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am, you're right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, actually, my question is to uh, Anindita, ma'am, like uh, how and when do uh, I know that a child uh, needs uh, remedial support? I mean, is there any uh, sign or symptom? Like you mentioned that a child uh, will withdraw from the activities and all. Uh, so is there any other uh, sign and symptom which will help us to know that a child needs uh, remedial support? Uh, I think remedial support means you're talking about the academics, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uh, when you see that a child in spite of teaching, uh, is not able to cope up with the regular curriculum, or the child is forgetting very quickly, or the child is not able to pay attention uh, to the given task, is sitting idle, uh, or he's very reluctant, doesn't mm -hmm. understand that if he doesn't write, he will fail in the exam. Mm -hmm. All these are the red flag signs uh, you must understand. And then you can uh, get the child assessed and start the remediation. Okay. Because uh, remediation is majorly in academics only we uh, talk about. So it happens that, you know, the child is not. Uh, parent is uh, kind of pushing the child without knowing that the child has some learning difficulties. Mm -hmm. So that is where the parents should intervene and find out what is wrong with the child, why the child is not able to learn the way other children are learning. Okay, okay. Right. Thank you very much, ma'am.
Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. Uh, I now request Oshani Ma'am. Ma'am, would you please perform your question? Good afternoon, everyone present here. I have a question for Shubhika, ma'am. Ma'am, how to deal with the transition from remote online classroom to the offline mode of teaching learning as many students are having difficulty in adapting to this change? Um, that's a really, really uh, good question and very uh, important because it's really the need of the hour with schools opening up uh, recently. Um, a, a lot of students are having um, an adjustment issue. I think over there, the role of the school and the, and the teacher and the parents together, uh, like I was saying, and what I said is, you know, we have to be a team together for the child, right? And the number one thing is to accept that there will be hindrances, there will be challenges. Coming back into the classroom setup or offline teaching after two years is a long period of time. And for some children, it's also the first time. So in such a case, we've got to be extremely patient and tolerant with them and also slow down the pace of offline teaching. So, you know, slow it down, give pauses, uh, reiterate what you're saying and check in with students what have they understood. Um, you will also find whether online or offline, it's the same group of, you know, the handful of students, eight to 10, who'll always raise their hands and ask. You know, it might be helpful to pick on some other students, which doesn't mean picking on the weak ones or the ones who are talking, but just randomly ask others in a very, very non-confrontational, authoritative manner. And if they don't know the answer, if they're quiet, it's all right. Share the answer with them or get someone else to speak. They shouldn't be humiliated or embarrassed at this point by saying, oh, you're not studying your growth, you know, uh, your growth is you're still stuck in class five and you should be in seven now. Naturally, even the mental and physical development of children has been hampered in this time. So we as adults need to disaccommodate with patience and tolerance for that. And hopefully in a few months, our children are extremely, extremely resilient and very, very quick to adjust. And in a few months, I think they will catch up. But we just need to handhold them right now. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Shubhika, ma'am. Can we now have Sangeeta, ma'am? Sangeeta Majumdar, ma'am, from your question. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my question is to uh, Mrs. Shubhika Singh. Uh, toddlers who are about to start with their formal schooling often experience separation anxiety. So, ma'am, as teachers, how can we provide support to the parents? Um, separation anxiety happens to uh, not only to the toddlers, it also happens to the parents who, uh, you know, uh, they're so used to having the little shonamona, kule kule, you know, with them all the time. The anxiety also happens in the parents. So I think the first and foremost thing is for a parent to check in on their anxiety. Are they worrying too much about the child going? Will they fall? Will they eat? And, you know, that anxiety a parent has gets transferred onto the child and into all the other family members. So number one is a parent who's feeling very anxious. Talk to someone about it. Um, you know, seek some help. You know, there are many tips available online or professionals you can talk to to manage your own anxiety. Number two is communicate with the teacher. So whoever the teacher is in your class, uh, communicate with the teacher, letting them know that uh, you're a bit anxious. And, the, and you know, the thing is, the one thing is that teachers are there to care for your child um, and to really respect that that is the primary motive for them being there. So let trust them. Trust them with looking after your child for those one or two hours. Um, you know, your child will fall. They may get hurt. But don't blame a teacher or another student for it. You know, they're also understanding and grappling with these things. And we've all been through that. We've all hurt ourselves in school and come home crying. And that's really part of growing up. So as a teacher, I think it's just, you know, uh, be supportive, be kind um, to the parent who's also probably extremely anxious as a child. So the child cries, but the parent can't cry, but they might be communicating that in other ways. Thank you, ma'am. 
Thank you for your suggestion. Thank you. Welcome. We now move on to uh, Shreya Dee, ma'am. Ma'am, your question, please. Thank you, Shreya, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. My question is to Dr. Anandita Chatterjee, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, how can we identify the symptoms of autism in a child? We deal with very young children. So is there any proper guideline that we can follow to identify the symptoms of autism in a child? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, check whether the child is able to speak or not. At what age do you get uh, admission in toddler? Hello, can you hear me? Ma'am, there is an audio issue. I think um, voice is not very clear. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll continue. So first and foremost, uh, can I'm audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Okay. So first and foremost, you have to check whether the child is able to speak uh, adequately uh, in terms of, see, uh, sometimes children, they have anxiety uh, when they come out of the house speaking to a stranger or teacher, whatever. So uh, you have to check the... Uh, communication skill in the child, whether the child is able to uh, say simple things when you're asking something, whether the child is looking at you, uh, or uh, when you when you uh, say something in the class, you say to the whole class, like all of you make a circle, or all of you clap your hands. So these are the things children follow at once. But a child with autism may not be able to follow that. He or she may uh, take away a piece of flock or anything in their hand and go apart. So you have to see whether the child is in the group and you have to check how the child plays. Play is very, very important in child's life. So uh, to uh, the pointers are communication skills, eye contact, following of command, sitting and paying attention are the uh, symptoms you have to look into uh, to identify a child with autism spectrum disorder. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Thank you. We now have a question from Raju Shima. Ma'am, your question, please. Ma'am, your audio, ma'am, your microphone is not. Ma'am, it's not audible. All right, uh, ma'am, we'll come back to you. Uh, let us move on to Suparna, ma'am. Suparna Banerjee, ma'am. Can we have your question, please? Ma yes. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. My question is uh, for uh, Suvika, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, if we notice some signs of anxiety in our child, what is the first aid that we as parents can uh, provide? Um, that's a very pertinent question because I think the one thing that we've all seen, observed around us in the pandemic is a high levels of anxiety amongst um, not only adults, but also children. Um, we need to understand that uncertainty brings in and raises anxiety levels. So telling them not to worry, go be negative, uh, you overthink too much is not the solution, right? What should we do? Encourage them. The way, the best way to actually manage anxiety is uh, deep breathing, which is really reinstating our physiological balance. So just hold them at that time, hold their hand uh, because that gives them another sensation and just do some rounds, five to seven rounds of deep breathing, which will help calm them down. Avoid talking to them too much at that time or giving them advice. At that point, soothe them, calm them down and let them know it's okay for them to worry. It's okay for them to not feel okay. You know, we have to understand and accept these are difficult times for all of us. There are new challenges. Uh, the new normal is actually now the normal. 
and it's all right if they're grappling, let them know they can always rely on you as a teacher, as a parent to guide them through. Um, but with that question, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me here today. And it's been a wonderful morning into the afternoon um, having this discussion with all of you. Um, I'm sorry, I do have another appointment and I'm already late for that. So I would request you uh, to let me take leave now. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shudika, ma'am. Um, am I audible? Uh, yes. I think uh, I, I also have some commitments. So uh, yes, I think we need to, um, Shreya, ma'am. We need to call it today because uh, all of them, all our uh, guest speakers, they have prior appointments, and we are running out of time. So yes, thank you so much. For inviting me and giving me opportunity to speak to you all. It was a very pleasant experience. Thank you all. Thank you so very much. In case any further question is remaining unanswered, we'll request all of you to share the questions with us. Uh, and uh, Councillor Ma'am can give her mail ID here in the chat box. And then we could get the expert advice and pass it on to the people who are raising these questions. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, Just have uh, Chandra ma'am uh, giving out the vote of thanks. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Parenting is at a focal point today due to pandemic, which forced us to do homeschooling. In hope of bringing about a complete balance so as to evolve as happy parents, raising happier children, we come to the end of this uh, conducive discussion. I would like to extend my heartiest gratitude to Dr. Anindita Chatterjee, uh, Mr. Ramji Valla, and Mrs. Shubhika Singh for taking time out of their busy schedule to grace the occasion. Special thanks to Mr. Bikram Ghosh for being so supportive in our initiative. We are indebted to the progressive management of BDM International for extending their support. A big thank you to all our parents for always being a part of all our endeavors. Thank you and stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>